Well, good morning. Right, say good morning. No? Oh, man. Well, I'll say good morning to you. Uh, we are starting off the day by going and dropping Riley off at school. And then uh, we are going to head out and do an off-road recovery of, I believe it's a Jeep Renegade. Uh, the guy got stuck two days ago out in the snow and uh, had to get pulled out of there or him a ride out of there. And now we're going to meet up with him this morning and go back and uh, get his vehicle out. But first, we're going to get a donut. Which one do you want? Way in the back? Okay. Okay, we got Riley dropped off at school after we had our little donut date breakfast. And then now we are uh, at the entrance to China Hat Road. Where we're going to wait for our customer to show up uh, at some point. And he's going to hop in with me and we're going to head out here and go find his car. Decided to go ahead and air down the tires while we're waiting. Save some time. That makes the single biggest difference off-road. Every modification you do, nothing makes as big of a difference as just airing down your tires. All right, so we got Sam here. Uh, you got a Jeep Renegade? Jeep Renegade. So what happened? Uh, I was coming back from Ben, took the scenic route by like a dump, but and uh, got caught out here. Snow stuck up, snuck up on me. Should have turned around, did not. Dumb move. I got search and rescue, luckily. Uh, yeah, you can see the, the snowcat tracks right there. Yep. So they pinged my phone and found me. I didn't have any service. So thankfully, my wife knew exactly knew where I was at a certain time of the day back down in China Hat in Baker. And then the uh, snowcat came out and got me later that night, last uh, Monday night. So there's a lesson right yeah. there. Yeah. Let someone know where you're going and when you should be back so that they can call for help if you're not back. Correct. Yes, so we are cruising out here to go, or shouldn't be too awful much farther, and go see if we can get him pulled out of here. So, got my truck stuck. Uh, I was going just fine and these ruts are super hard packed, but uh, and there, there was a little, a little bunny rabbit right in the track that had died and was laying there. I didn't want to run his little body over, so I went to split the tracks over and go around him, but I sunk, so now we're stuck. I just eyeballed the tires earlier when I aired them down. Uh, they weren't that low. I just put the more flight set up on there. They're 18, so we're going to take about 10 more pounds out of them, go down to about eight, and then uh, see if we can drive out of here without winching. Now, I know what you're saying. That's not even that bad. I could drive right through that in my moped. No, you can't. If this was powder snow, yeah, no problem. Uh, I get that a lot of like, how did those people get stuck? That's not even that much snow. My whatever drives through it snow yeah this is like hard as a rock ice like look at this we're not sinking into it at all jumping on it so as soon as the diffs or the belly pin or skid plates of a vehicle hit the center part that is hard as a rock uh it's hard as a rock the nickname for it around here is actually cascade concrete because we're in the cascades and it hardens up as hard as concrete now what causes that is in this area uh like today for example it's currently 26 degrees probably got down into the teens uh, last night and then today during the day it's supposed to get up to around 50. Now the snow will not melt away at 50 degrees but it will get super wet and slushy and when it goes back down into the teens tonight that super wet slushy freezes and uh, hardens up so it's not the powder snow anymore now it's concrete. But as you can see here only the top layer of that snow does that melt and refreeze and harden up thing because everything under is insulated by the snow so once you do break through that layer you're in just soft fluffy snow down there with this hard as a rock stuff on top so no traction down there and a hard thing up here it's stopping you from moving in the direction that's why it's so easy to get stuck in such a small amount of snow in these conditions let's see where we're at Seven point seven. That's right, about eight pounds, close enough. And then now all four tires are exactly the same pressure. You just slide this valve open to let it out, close it to stop it. Very handy.
Yeah. <laughs> nice guy, see? Should have just done that the first time. Yeah. stuck and moving again uh, I should have just moved the rabbit in the first place but uh, now the rabbits move so we can drive right back out and you can see how easy it is once you get out of the pack tracks to just sink and uh, that that packed hard layer on top is also why uh, you don't see very many people use tire chains around here because what tire chains do is they break up that crust that you drive on top of and cause you to blow through it and sink in and get stuck so tire chains I should probably move that log too. Log, it's a tiny little tree branch, but same thing. Um, tire, tire chains are a very snow condition dependent uh, thing. Uh, in all reality, see, log. In all reality, snow chains should really be called ice chains because they are made for icy roads, not uh, deep snow so in these conditions tire chains will actually cause you to get stuck sooner and worse which is why you hardly ever see us use them I see yep. your, your roof up there. So yep. right uh, here, these tire tracks that go off to the side and back on the road mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. are from this truck a week ago when we came up here on a little search and rescue deal and there's a pickup stuck right here. Ah. This is where I drove around them and Ooh. got in front. I made it for them. Yeah, well, you did, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Well, that's where I drove around them and got in front to pull them to that spot you're at because there's actually a really good turnaround spot right where you are. So. That makes that part easy. Okay. So normally how this goes is search and rescue gets people. I get vehicles. Uh, but every once in a while, uh, things that I think are a vehicle recovery job end up turning into a search and rescue. Um, and I, I try to avoid that because the search and rescue thing should be handled by search and rescue, not me. I should handle vehicle stuff. But uh, sometimes without knowing all the information you're getting into stuff, that's what you get into. So that one there did turn into kind of like a search and rescue deal and we've done a few other of those, but if it starts to turn into that, I always try to get a hold of search and rescue and give them a heads up of what's going on so that uh, if something goes wrong, they already know what's going on. So, yeah, you made it farther than the, the F-150 did. That's because you're driving a Jeep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's go check it out. So luckily, Jeep puts tow points on their stuff that are easily accessible. So, oh yeah, you could use some new tires. Yeah. <laughs> um, right there is where that trailhead is. It's, it's very shallow snow right there. So I will hook onto you and just pull you backwards right down the center okay. to right where that big tree is. Okay. And then we'll turn you around and I'll stay in front of you on the way out. That way in case you get stuck and you pulled out, I'm in front to pull. Yeah. So you're gonna get it fired up and warmed up and I'll pull out a rope. Light little vehicle, not really stuck at all, easy. We'll use a small three quarter, what's a three quarter 20? That's yeah, three quarter 20. Three quarter inch diameter, 20 foot long rope. I thought it was a 30, which means I need to pull my pickup up farther. I'm just having him stay in neutral and I'm doing the pulling. Uh, it's going to want to pull him to that side since the rope is hooked to this side of his vehicle. So he's going to have to fight that a little bit, but it'll be okay. All right, go ahead and put it in reverse and back up a little bit just to make sure it'll move on its own right there.
perfect. Okay. I'll go grab that camera and then we'll get spun around. Now I have to walk all the way back out there to go get my camera. Oh, here's an example. Now it's all kind of chewed up some. Of, look how look how powdery it is underneath that crust. So when your bumpers, skid plates, differences, whatever, actually here it is right here, are pressing against this crust or your tire's trying to climb out of it, and that hard as a rock crust is holding you in place, and it's just this soft powder in here that your tires are in, can't get any traction, that's why you get stuck. It's also why you fall down. Here's the part people don't see. They just see like the recoveries. They don't see me walking back and forth, setting up cameras, picking up cameras, and going back and actually doing the job again. And we'll probably set up the cameras again and have to go back and pick up the cameras again while we do this part of the job. So there's a lot more to this than just the recovery part that I actually like show uh, when I'm by myself. When there's someone else to help film, it's, it's much easier. inches if it will all right I'll just hook up the rope and pull you around Put it in neutral. Neutral. Okay. Just leave it in neutral and keep your wheels right where they are. And then uh, once it comes out, just try to get center of the track. the way out you just stay as center of the hard pack tracks as you can and if you get stuck we'll just hook on and pull again oh. almost fell so even just a few miles back down the road this is this is what it's like most the rest of the way we're about 30 miles out uh, you see the snow's not deep it's just ruts every which way and they are hard as a rock which is why you haven't been seeing much of the track jeep lately is because we, we had a great early snow season and then it just went away and this warm and freeze and warm and freeze has just turned the snow like one there's no need for the track jeep in this situation here and on these super hard ruts all over it's not fun to drive it's, it's very very rough in that in that situation so i just been using this truck a lot and it's been it's been doing great so uh I would really like to get the track jeep out some more, but um, 
the sunny blue skies and the 60 or 50 degree uh, forecast for today says it might be a bit before we get to do that. So we'll see. Okay, we made it back to pavement. That thing made it out no problem. I made it in no problem. <laughs> that's, <fun. laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point. Yeah. Now, something I've seen quite a few times in the comments now um, that actually does make a lot of sense to do is people asked if I would put the time and how long uh, these jobs took just to have a reference of time. I do think that's a good idea. Uh, this particular job, not counting dropping Riley off at school and you know taking off some extra time for like all the camera stuff I do, uh, this is about a four hour job round trip from the time I left my yard, go do the job, get back to my yard. It's really going to take about four and a half hours because of the extra stuff, but it's really a four hour job now the reason i do think that's relevant and important i'm going to start including the videos is the other comments i see a lot are people saying like well i remember when i got pulled out of a ditch uh the tow company only pulled me five feet and charged me how many hundreds of dollars for five feet and and no they didn't you didn't get charged for five feet you got charged for everything it took to do that job like this particular job here in all reality the on-scene time the time it took me from when we pulled up to have him unstuck turned around and driving off on his own from there and he was good to go five minutes grand total five minutes that's all the recovery portion of this took but the whole job took four hours to do that's what you get charged for luckily uh youtube has put me in a position where i'm able to just help people like this and not have to charge them and that has made my life so much easier other than the walking back and forth to pack cameras around thing uh, but I very much just prefer what I'm doing. I love being able to do it. I'm very happy to be in this position where I can do it. Now, of course, the other thing I see that I'm not going to include is, uh, well, what would it have cost if you did charge them? And the reason I'm not going to include that is because all across the country in different areas, the rates are drastically different. Even within the same area from tow company to tow company, it's drastically different. And even within the same company from job to job, it's drastically different because again, you're going to get charged for what it took to do that job. Did I need this truck? Did I need a different vehicle? Uh, what was the train we had to go through? Was it a simple little road like this that was super easy on my truck and just had to pull you back out? Or was it gnarly hard stuff that's putting a lot of wear and tear on my truck? All that factors into what a job actually costs. So every job is different and is why you never see anyone really talking about prices because if I were to say this job cost a hundred dollars per se and uh, then I go to another job that seems similar but what it took to do it was really much harder and I charged that guy two hundred dollars and he saw where I said it was only a hundred dollars for the other guy then it's like well why are you trying to rip me off when you did that for him and it just turns into a mess and that's why we don't say prices uh, if you want to know what ballpark of recovery would cost in your area from the type of tow companies that are around you call one and ask or get stuck and find out but for now uh, that's going to be it for this one uh, i am going to air up these tires then head back towards home and try to get some uh, real work done and uh, we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching